Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how easily you can patch a hole in your drywall using the California patch method. So stay tuned. So friends, thank you so much for tuning in once again. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing that subscribe button down below so you can always be in tune on DIYs and how-to videos just like this one. Now on today's topic, we're going to be covering this hole right here on the drywall. So unfortunately, not every one of us can go right behind our drywall and fully assess the damage. That's why I made this mock-up so I can clearly show you it's a lot bigger than what you really think it is from the front. So when you start measuring, you're gonna have to measure a lot bigger than this hole. If you take your tape measure, it measures to about an inch and a half to a two and a half inch hole. Now, if you look at the back, the damage is much more extreme due to the blowout of that hammer. So you're actually looking at about a three inch to by a four inch damage. Biggest measurement I see here that I'm gonna do is about four inches and I'll just go make it a four inch by four inch perfect square. There's many ways to do this. You can just eyeball it as you wish, but you know, if you have the resources, like for me, I have a straight edge right here because I have it readily available. But if you don't have it, you can just eyeball it. So I'll measure about four inches here, four inches here, four inches here, four inches here, just so we can make it into a perfect square. There's two ways that you can cut this hole. You can use a retractable box knife like this one or a keyhole saw made for drywall like this one. I'll cut half with this one and cut half with this one so you can see which method is a lot better for you. But again, using just this would be fine. All these tools I'll leave in the description down below. If you're interested, um, I'll make it easier for you in finding all these tools that I'm using. Again, be very, very careful when using this knife. You don't want to take out too much of the blade because it could possibly snap off and fly and hit you. Always away from your body in case it slips. It would be a very, very bad day. I would run it a few times just so you can get deep in there. That's one half of it. Okay, now the other half, I'll be using the keyhole saw. Before you go and cut something behind your wall, make sure you assess what's behind there because there could be electrical piping or whatnot and you don't want to end up cutting any of that. Okay, there you have it. Nice and square. We'll go and measure about an inch and a half on each side so that you can make it for your flaps. Just gonna round it off, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go seven. So I'm gonna do a seven by seven piece. Here now is our piece of scrap drywall. So measure about seven to seven piece right here. I'll measure seven, measure seven, like so. If you have a square, use that. If you have any straight edge, that will work as well. Score it. Now to cut drywall, all you gotta do is score the top layer. Scoring means just cutting it just like so. Just like that. You don't have to dig all the way deep because this thing breaks off just like that. Just cut the backing right there. Easy. So now measure seven here. Mark it right there. Score the top. Snap it like, oh, that one that I even have to cut just popped right off. You're gonna use the back. You're gonna flip it over and then you're gonna lay it against the hole. Go about a quarter inch inward, not perfect to the side. Okay, and then go on here. Just eyeball it, quarter inch, quarter inch, just like so. Now again, you can do this and cut it at the same time, like so, like that. I don't like doing that because for me, I'm just not a perfect, you know, I'm not, I do it, I mess up most of the time. That's why I rely on straight edges. So I'm not gonna take my chances. It's a, totally up to you. 
If you have a good and steady hand, I don't, unfortunately. That's why I'm going to use a straight edge. And you're just going to gently score the top. You don't want to go all the way. Because if you do, you're going to end up messing up that paper backing that you need. Okay, just like that. Here's a trick. If you take this to the edge, instead of doing it like this, you can do it like this. But it's a, it's a lot harder to take out the paper like that. You can actually just lay it on the edge and then work from there slowly, just like that right there so you don't risk tearing the paper because this is what you need i mean i can try it for you guys you know doing it by hand let's see how it works again i'm all about options i mean you can do it too i mean it does work but if you want to be sure just use the edge mark it like so okay then we can tear it. Now that you have this nice and fit, like so, take it back out. Take some of your joint compound. Just spread that joint compound on the edge like that. Easy. This is what the paper is going to be adhering to. You don't want to make it too thin so that when you start pressing against it it will actually foam out and it's okay if you can get some around this square right here if you get some material there that's actually good to have a little bit of compound there too take some of the joint compound and put it on the edge just like that so this will fill out the little tiny voids that are on the back to make it flush Okay, and don't be afraid to get messy. It's only joint compound. All right, so this should fit just like so. If you had access to the back, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. All that joint compound just squishes to the edges, which is what you want. That's why you wanna load it on the sides. Then just push this in just like so. If you have a bigger hole, you can use your 10 to 12 inch knife and use that to push it in and level it out. Squeeze the excess out, just like that. Take your, you can take your 10 to 12 inch and then just slowly run it like that. Once you get that nice and applied, I would wait about a day or so to get everything dry, sand it, reapply some more drywall, and then we'll sand it again and flush it out. Maybe do a, set, a third coat on it and then we should be good to go. So now that we wait about a day, your compound should be nice and dry and it should be ready for sanding the sandpaper grit that you can use is 100 to 120 i'm using about 120 grit sandpaper right here i'm just going to wrap it on my used sanding block like so and just sand it nice and smooth so we can put the next coat on now that you've sanded it you can apply a second coat using your 10 to 12 inch knife So there you have it friends, easy as that. We applied the second coat, we'll let it dry once again and then wait for it for another day, sand it down. You can apply the third coat depending on how you know uneven your surface is, but if you think it's good after the second coat, you should be fine. Then you can apply whatever texture that you had previously on your wall. If you wanna learn how to apply texture, I made a separate video on that. Just click on the link up here. Again, this is by far the easiest way to patch drywall if you're very limited on material and all you have is joint compound and drywall. Again, there are multiple ways of doing this. 
and I'll show you on future videos on other routes and other ways, other methods on how to patch drywall. This is just by far the easiest route if you're going this way. Again, friends, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Please press that subscribe button and notification bell so you friends could always be in tune with what's going on with my house projects, DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. I'll see you on the next video.